Welcome to season 12 of the Parenting Aces podcast, a proud member of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and this week we have another former college tennis coach, Chase Hodges, now a vice president at Universal Tennis, joining us to discuss Universal Tennis's role in college tennis, in junior tennis, and in high school tennis. I am so excited for y'all to hear what Universal Tennis is offering. They've got camps, they've got tournaments, they've got pathways, they've got national championships, all kinds of great, great stuff coming your way. And Chase is here to answer questions and explain it and share links and email addresses and contact info with all of you. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with him. Before I bring him on, though, just a quick reminder, we'd love to have you join us as a free or a premium member of ParentingAces.com. Just go to our website, click on the join button and gain full access to everything we have to offer. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Chase Hodges of Universal Tennis. So good to see you, Chase Hodges. It's been a minute, but glad to get you back on the podcast in your new role at Universal Tennis. Happy to be here, Lisa. Really appreciate you having me on. And uh, anytime you want to talk tennis, you know you can reach out. Love your show. Thank you. And I do reach out and you always respond. So I appreciate that so much for our listeners that don't know you. You come from the college coaching world. You were the head men's and women's coach at Georgia Gwinnett College, which is an NAIA program that has historically produced some incredible players. Y'all, how many championships did y'all wind up with before you left? Uh, Fifteen. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of yeah. ridiculous, kind of ridiculous. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was a heck of a run. Uh, and the, the program is is in good hands now. And uh, obviously, you know, it was a good decade tenure there. And you had, you had made the journey up to Lawrenceville many times, Lisa. So, you know, you had the opportunity to kind of see the program in, in full scale. And um, obviously, college tennis is something that, you know, I'd I've been in since 18 years of age. So um, when I went off to college, so it's something that obviously I love and and you love and, you know, looking to, to help it as much as we can. Well, there's been a lot of changes this year in the college yeah. tennis world. And the most notable change was the announcement by the ITA that it was forming a partnership with USTA and World Tennis Number. And that sent a lot of ripples through the junior tennis community, as I'm sure you can imagine, for the families that have been planning, you know, for college tennis, planning for the recruiting process, working towards, you know, using UTR as a metric to gauge how close their kids were to being able to play at certain programs for certain coaches. And then this monkey wrench was kind of thrown out. Um, So I'd love to start with having you talk about what Universal Tennis has done to ensure that those junior athletes who have been using UTR for really a decade now uh, to to kind of track their growth and and development, what's Universal Tennis saying about UTR's role in college tennis recruiting? And what is Universal Tennis doing as a company to continue to promote college tennis and grow college tennis. And you can start with your role at Universal Tennis. Yeah, so uh, great question. I'm the vice president at Universal Tennis, um, really overseeing the college and and high school divisions, uh, among other things. Um, Really, you know, I I, I got on board in June uh, of 2022, so coming up on almost one year now. And uh, it's been an incredible experience. um, haven't regretted getting out of coaching for a day, Lisa. So, uh, you know, extremely happy with uh, Universal Tennis and what we've been able to to really do. And to kind of answer your question, really, I think you've seen uh, since January, uh, our commitment to college tennis is only really elevated uh, in terms of what we're doing for the sport, uh, in, tr- in terms of elevating and innovating the sport. Um, we had the opportunity to, you know, really just to start it to announce UTCA, which is the Universal Tennis Collegiate Alliance, uh, which is made up of 
12 coaches to our executive committee all across the country. And really the, the mission is elevate college tennis. It's that simple. What, do, what can we do to help the sport? Um, you know, we have a phenomenal committee with coaches like Manny Diaz at University of Georgia to uh, Coach Cohen at uh, University of Oklahoma, uh, really representing all five levels of college tennis, NAIA, Division I, Division II, Division Three, and junior college. So we put this committee together and we've been able to really move quick uh, and make things happen very, very fast. Um, one thing to note, Lisa, is we have over 90% of college coaches, it's around 92% of college coaches that are on our platform. And when I say that, I mean, they're looking at UTR uh, daily. They're looking at, you know, gauging talent all over the world. They're running events on our platform. Um, they're putting themselves in a position where they're running circuits, camps, uh, whatever it may be. They're using the platform to better their, their programs. And one thing that, you know, I can say is in 2022 alone, uh, we raised, you know, millions of dollars for college coaches on our platform was made all over the country, uh, which is a huge win in terms of helping these coaches. And as we have continued to unfold this year, I think that, you know, there's been several items that we've announced, such as the NIT tournament, which is going to be in the Atlanta area. Uh, that's going to be in May. Um, and a big announcement with that is that's going to be on Prime Video. Uh, so having that uh, really elevates our sport, getting it on Prime uh, having an opportunity for eight men's programs and eight women's programs to compete for a national championship in May is, is huge for the sport. And uh, we're certainly thrilled to, to get that initiative uh, running in literally two months. So uh, excited from that standpoint. I just got back from Indian Wells where we put on the UTR uh, college match challenge where we had Pepperdine and Southern Cal. Uh, unbelievable match, 3-3, three, three, goes down to a third set tiebreaker, Southern Cal pulls it out, 1,800 fans there watching that match, which is a huge, huge win for college tennis to be able to display that on a pro venue like the BMP, getting college tennis in those areas um, to really amp the profile up. You know, we've, I, I think you might have seen where at Australian Open 2024, uh, we're going to be bringing teams to that event to get college tennis showcased at a Grand Slam event. So um, multiple things that, that we're really putting into action. Um, the Hurt Awards just got announced uh, where we had $100,000 uh, go to Peyton Stearns to help her in her professional career and Andrew Fenty at Michigan um, to help him uh, really achieve uh, his dreams one day. And, you know, being able to uh, help out in, in that regard is, is a big win for us. And, you know, we're going to continue to do um, things in the college space uh, to make an impact. Uh, you know, another one was, I don't know if you saw the, where all college matches count for UTR now. So mm -hmm. if you're a college coach and you want to play your number seven, eight, nine, 10 singles player, number four, number five doubles, those results now go into UTR. And we have a lot of coaches that are now entering those results in, which is, you know, just been a huge win for, for those players to have something to compete for. So um, we're just excited for the future. That's, that's really, you know, where we are right now as of March 22nd, uh, with what we've accomplished and what we have moving forward in the future. Um, we really want to help the sport as much as we can. I think, you know, my takeaway from listening to you, Chase, and from following all the developments that Universal Tennis has been announcing recently is how quickly y'all have been able to pivot and get stuff not just announced, but actually enacted in action. Events are on the calendar, they're happening. And, um, you know, it's something that a large governing body just sometimes just doesn't have the ability to do because they're handcuffed by bureaucracy and red tape. And we've seen that over and over again with our national governing body, but it's, it's really nice to see Universal Tennis step up and, make good on that commitment to growing the game and growing college tennis specifically. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, this whole announcement with the ITA and WTN and how families of junior players and junior players themselves should now use UTR and Universal Tennis's offerings to aid in development, aid in recruiting opportunities? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's a great question. And, you know, ultimately, you know, ITA, WTN, I mean, that's a sponsorship. You know, that's that's what that is. UTR is the gold standard. It, 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 it is the gold standard. It has been. Coaches are using us. Like I mentioned, you know, we have over 90 percent of college coaches that are on the platform utilizing uh, the rating in terms of being able to find players to be in, in terms of being able to gauge levels. Um, we do have several products, Lisa, which I know you're familiar with from our college circuits to our junior circuits, to our junior national pathway, to our UTR pro tennis tour. Uh, one interesting fact about the UTR pro tennis tour is it's got close to 1500 players uh, that are currently playing college tennis or have played college tennis. And, you know, we're in countries all over the world. So it's an opportunity to really help those players that want to play pro tennis get on the radar and have the ability financially to achieve their dreams. And that's something that we're continuing to invest in as our pro tennis tour. We're continuing to elevate the game with Amazon and get this exposure that is drastically needed. And, you know, I would tell junior players all over the country, we're going to continue to get better. We're going to continue to try to improve. And with that being said, all I can say from a WTN standpoint is, you know, it, it's it's just another metric. You know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. UTR has, has proven itself and we're going to continue to prove ourselves as as the gold standard. And, you know, I think that the future will tell that story. What about UTR junior events? Can you talk a little bit about those tournaments and what the future looks like for those events? Um, because I think what happened when ITA and WTN announced this partnership, well, I guess it was ITA and USTA really, um, families started kind of feeling like, oh my gosh, should we now just focus on USTA tournaments and ITF tournaments? You know, my kid really enjoys playing UTR events because of the structure and how many matches they get to play, but those events aren't going to count toward WTN and college coaches are only going to be looking at WTN now, according to the ITA. And how do we yeah. kind of reconcile all that? Well, I can tell you that, you know, we, we have over 50,000 events that are literally on our platform per year, Lisa. And that includes thousands of events that aren't going into WTN. So, you know, that's something that I think everyone should really take note of is when you look at our algorithm and what we're able to establish for these players is we're going to have plenty of opportunities all over the country. And that's something that I look forward to sharing with you here in the podcast is being able to kind of direct players to certain locations of our websites so that they, they can find these events um, when you look at the general landscape in terms of if you want to play college tennis and you're a tennis player that's, you know, in California, Georgia, Iowa, wherever it may be, we're going to have those opportunities for you to compete, work on your rating and get you the exposure that you need. The reality that we have that I think is something that really isn't talked about is the relationships that we have with the college coaches is significant. Uh, we're talking to college coaches every day. Uh, we're running college circuits, we're running college camps, we're running just general UTR events all over the country. Now it's just a matter of you being able to find those events. And that's something I'm going to be able to show you today. Yeah, awesome. And and I want to just, again, reiterate this whole idea of, you know, working toward a higher rating. That's not really what this is about. It's about right. working toward getting better every single day. And if you right. do that, the rating takes care of itself, whether that's right. a universal tennis rating, whether it's a world tennis number, whether it's a tennis recruiting.net star rating, right. everything takes care of itself if the player is putting in the work and, and getting better each day. And so why not? Right play as many events as makes sense for your family's right. time, budget, scheduling, location, all of that. And right. if you do that, the ratings are going to go up. You know, they, right. they just are. There's, there's no manipulating. It's, it's right. all about putting in the work and it is work, you know, make no mistake. Right. Um, right. You know, right. people try to game the system. They try and, kind of figure out, oh, the algorithm works this way. So if I if I ditch this player, but I try and play this other player, it's going right. to boost my UTR. It, no, right. <laughs> just play. 
<laughs> I couldn't agree more. I mean, just go out and play. Um, you know, when you look at, like you said, I mean, it's an algorithm, you know, and, and really it's, it's a, it's a metric. Um, you know, when you go out and play, if you're playing someone below you or above you, whatever it is, go out there, compete, give it 110% and let the results fall where they may, where they may. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of juniors, you know, tend to get way overly hyper-focused on the rating. I think you would agree, Lisa, with, with yes. parents, et cetera. And, you know, I, I would just encourage, use the metric or use the rating as a metric to gauge your level and continue to compete, continue to go out and play. Um, don't get caught up into this scenario where, you know, I'm playing someone 1.3 points below me, you know, maybe I shouldn't play this match. That's, you know, that's not the intention of the metric. The metrics really used to promote level-based play all over the world. And that's what it's done. So, um, you know, I couldn't agree with you more on that topic. And, you know, hopefully more and more players will realize that, you know, at the end of the day, development is everything. And you got to continue to compete. And the more matches you play, the better, the more you can develop. And, um, you know, if you look at it from that approach, then I feel like certain things can fall into place. Yeah, absolutely. Before I, we do the screen share thing and you show us around yeah. the Universal Tennis website, I want you to put your college coach hat on for a second and talk to us about what college coaches are looking at when they're looking at a child's UTR. Um, what is it? How do they use that rating and any other ratings or rankings that may be available to make a decision about whether a certain player is the best fit for their team? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, the, the biggest, the biggest one there is every college tennis program has a UTR power six. So as a coach, you know, where your number one is, you know, where your number six is in your lineup. So when you're looking at players and you're able to kind of see the metric of a potential recruit, you kind of know where they would fit in in regards to your lineup based on, uh, the algorithm. Now, when you look at players that are really trying to move, say, you know, say you're just starting out, you're in that 3.2 UTR range and you're trying to work up to a four, five, six, et cetera, whatever it may be. You know, the biggest thing, Lisa, with this is you got to get matches. You got to get out there and play. You got to get opportunities to compete. And really what will happen is the, the algorithm will take care of itself. But from the coaching standpoint, what I've seen for many college coaches is they're looking at really where you're trending in the past year, you know, having an opportunity to kind of see your results really over those last maybe six, eight, 10 months, whatever it may be, because those generally tell the story in terms of where your where your level is at the current moment, as opposed to, you know, going through the archives and going two to three years back, you know, let's be honest, you know, results years in the, in, you know, years away really don't carry that much weight as opposed to the recent results. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're going out and competing as a, as a college recruit, you know, look for those opportunities to put yourself in a position where you have that level based play. And the really, the, the easiest part from a, from a junior standpoint is, you know, you, there's some degree of realistic, uh, you know, if, if, if I'm, if I'm a 9.3 UTR and I'm looking at a college tennis program and I see that, you know, the, the number six player on that team is an 11.8, then maybe that's not the program that I need to be looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways where maybe I'm a nine three and I see that the top player on that team is a nine three and I don't want to go to a school where I'm going to be the number one player. I want to go somewhere where I'm going to be maybe middle bottom of the lineup. So, you know, use the metric from that standpoint in terms of being able to find that program that's really going to suit you. Uh, because the reality, and I tell this to people all the time, Lisa, there's a program for everyone, yeah. regardless of your UTR, regardless really of your level. There's so many college tennis programs out there, junior college, NAI, division one, two, and three, where you can play, you can be a part of that program. It's just a matter of, you know, finding them and reaching right. out to those coaches. And, you know, that that's the beauty of this is there's a program for everyone. Well, and, and I want to just point out that you said, that you have, you, the player, have to find them and reach out to those coaches. So um, I, last week we had a podcast with Amy Bryant, who's the former head women's coach at Emory. And she and I talked about the fact that, you know, there's this misconception that the college coaches are going to come calling for you. That's, yeah. that's not how it works. 
Um, if you're number right. one in your recruiting class, yeah, it's probably working that way. But, right. you know, otherwise, the the player him or herself has to put the work in, reach out to the coaches, get on their radar, and um, and you know, listen. The the Universal Tennis College Fit tool is something I recommend all the time. Like, right. go use that. Figure out where you fall. Figure out which schools are, you know, going to be good fits for you. Because the last thing you want is to to get recruited to play, sign on the dotted line, you know, maybe as a walk on thinking, oh, I'm going to work my way into the lineup doesn't typically work that way. So, right. yeah. Right. And, and uh, I mean, I agree with Amy. I mean, and, and, and you in terms of, you know, let's select your top 10 schools. You know, if you're a prospect and, and you, you got 10 schools that you really are interested in, reach out to those 10 coaches. And, you know, I tell players this all the time if the coach doesn't respond you move on yeah you know it's it's one of those where you know personally I would want to go to a school where the coach is receptive and we we build some communication we build a relationship and you know I make my decision that way so you know it's it's one of those where when you reach out to these players if you are within say the UTR range or, or whatnot you meet the academic the you know the financials you know you, you check all the boxes in terms of you know, being a prospective student athlete at that school, then that coach should be reaching back to you and you should be able to make your decision based off, you know, that communication and that rapport that you build. So, um, you know, I, I agree with you. If you're sitting around waiting, uh, like you said, unless you're, you know, uh, top 100 in the world or, or whatnot, then, you know, you might be waiting a little longer than <laughs> you'd like. Yeah. All right. So, do me a favor, share your screen with us. And for those yeah. of you listening to this and not viewing it on parentingaces.com or our YouTube channel, I highly encourage you to go check it out on either of those places, um, parentingaces.com. You can click on the podcast tab and find it there or go to the Parenting Aces YouTube channel and you'll see the video version there as well. And you'll be able to see what Chase is now sharing with us. Okay. Okay. So now yes. I'll be quiet and yeah, let so you go. <laughs> no problem. So we'll just start right out of the gates. Universal Tennis College Circuits. Uh, you know, Lisa, we're going to have several hundred of these in 2023. Um, as we um, go through the months here, you can kind of get an idea in terms of as we head into the summer months. You can see June, we're going to be, you can actually register for these now. You know, we have locations all over the country, Oklahoma State, Georgia Gwinnett, Louisiana, Duke, um, et cetera, you would have the opportunity to play in these events. Um, these are uh, incredible events because as I Who are they open to, Chase? All players. Open events for all players. Lisa, Juniors? You could Lisa, you could play. I could play. Okay. Uh, anyone, anyone can play. Juniors, uh, current college players. Um, as you can see, they continue here. And, uh, and, and sorry to August. interrupt you again. How are players yep. selected for the events? Well, I'm going to go right into this. What makes Oh, these sorry. Events, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're good. What makes these events uh, really innovative and cool is their tiered prize money events. So if, if the tournament has 32 players to 63, Universal Tennis is going to give you $1,000. We're going to give you tennis balls for the event, and you're going to be able to run this event. Now, it's up to the organizer, Lisa, in terms of how they, they do the – the uh, UTR levels. Typically, mm -hmm. most most organizers they're taking the top 32 UTR players and put them in a, in that A flight, mm -hmm. and then working all the way down B flight, C flight, etc. This has been extremely successful. We started these in the fall, Lisa. We had over 3,500 players uh, this past fall with our Universal Tennis College circuits. Uh, I will I will tell you if you're interested in these. Send an email, college at universaltennis.com. We'll get you taken care of. You don't have to go the tiered prize money method if you don't want to. If you just want to go a normal method where you 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 don't have prize money, et cetera, you can really choose whatever path you want to go there. So um, next up, I'm gonna jump into our universal tennis college camps. These, Lisa, we 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 implemented these in 2022 mm -hmm. and we're in we're heading into year two. We are the number one camp provider on college campuses now. Um, as you can see, and we really get them going in May and into June. We have them all over the country, uh, Oklahoma here, 
uh, Georgia State, Harvard, Penn, Baylor, uh, Duke, Yale, et cetera. These are going to be all over the United States. Universaltennis.com backslash college camps here, Miami. You're going to see literally all the way through, continue through August. And then we'll be having these September, October, November, and December. We'll have our fall and winter camps. These have been really phenomenal for juniors, for players that are new to the game, uh, for players that are, you know, competitive players, whatever it may be. One of the things that is really innovative in this uh, regard, Lisa, is these are camps where you get verified match play element as well. So okay. you sign up for camp, you have an opportunity to have a wonderful camp experience, you have an opportunity to get some verified match play during the camps. If you're interested in these, camps at universaltennis.com will get you taken care of, send an email, we'll be good to go there. Uh, junior National Pathway. This is something I know you're extremely familiar with, Lisa. These are yep. our Junior National Pathway events. They're kicking off this weekend at, at Georgia Gwinnett. Uh, we have these events. Really, they're more regional events uh, located uh, at select colleges and clubs all over the country. Um, these are great events in terms of getting an opportunity to play level-based play in an op with an opportunity to qualify for a national championship, which will be held in July in San Diego uh, at Barnes. This next uh, tab is our UTR Pro Tennis Tour. Uh, I'm running through these pretty quick because I know I'm limited in time today, but uh, these are events all over the world. So we have these in Japan, Serbia, uh, Atlanta coming up, Newport Beach, um, et cetera, Greece, Germany, Mexico City. These are events all over the world on our platform, $25,000 events. They're really innovative in terms of the way that they're run. Uh, you get guaranteed match play, guaranteed prize money, gives you an opportunity to really improve your game. I'm still scrolling Charleston, Netherlands, et cetera, and we'll be announcing more as the year goes. So, um, that was a quick intro, but even with that being said, you can find you can find UTR events being run all over the world on the platform. It's just a matter of you, you know, visiting the site, searching the location, searching those areas, and we're going to continue to grow these events and get more and more events as we go. For junior players who are interested in playing some of these different events, it I mean, do you recommend that they reach out to the tournament director to find out, you know, if their level is appropriate for the event or what's what's the best way to determine which events to play? Well, first and foremost, if, if the tournament directors don't hide the list, you know exactly who's going to be in. Uh, some people choose to, to hide the list. It is what it is. Every director has the ability to, to choose that. Um, you mentioned it. Reaching out to the tournament director is, is one way to really determine does my level fit in. Uh, the other level is just viewing the player list, you know, mm -hmm. having an opportunity to see, you know, does my level fit in with this event? If so, I should sign up. Not to mention, we have UTR flex leagues all over the country. Um, so if you're looking just to play some flex matches, um, really they're in every market throughout the United States, you have the opportunity to get matches in at your own time. Usually it's four matches over maybe a five, six week period. Uh, you have that ability to to work on your game and do it in a, in a in an environment that's not a tournament environment. It's a more potentially stress free environment, maybe. But you have that opportunity. <laughs> When's to, the last to time you were way. around league play, Chase? Come on. <laughs> well, you know, flex leagues. You know, you never know. But I mean, you're going to have opportunities regardless of tournaments or flex yeah. leagues to really develop your game. So absolutely, you just have to have to find them. They're all yeah. there. Universaltennis.com. And for the summer camps, um, also, you know, I one question I get quite often is, you know, how do I ensure that there are going to be players of the right level at the camp um, so that my kid, you know, is is getting the right level of competition and instruction while they're there? Again, I would say reach out to the camp director and yep. ask the yep. question, you know, let them know right. the level your child is and, and ask, you know, is there a specific week that is more right. geared to players that are my kids level. Right. You right. have to and be proactive. You, for sure. Got to be proactive. And I can tell you from the organizer standpoint, from the camp standpoint, one of the biggest wins that we hear from, from these organizers is, you know, the ability, I've got 40 kids registered 
I can see their UTR. So I'm able to group them accordingly on the first day of camp. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a position where I'm having to wait a few hours on day one or even day two to group accordingly. I have the ability to see their ratings, see kind of the level that they fall into. And with that being said, the verified match play component allows these players, regardless of where they fit in, to get a rating. Some come in unrated. By the end of the camp, they're rated. Uh, They have that ability. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go. But ultimately, when you reach out to the tournament director, they should be able or the camp organizer, they should be able to let you know this is going to be a, a good fit for you or not. Right. And and one thing I want to just add to that is, you know, one of the big perks of the Universal Tennis platform is the flexibility that it offers to organizers, whether that's a tournament organizer or a camp organizer or any other, you know, league organizer to do things in a way that best suits the players of that area. So, you know, I urge all of the listeners, if you haven't tried a universal tennis camp or tournament or other event, reach out to the directors of your local events and find out, you know, what's appropriate for your kid, because this is a really good opportunity for your kid to play against players that they aren't meeting every week at regular junior tournaments. You know, maybe they're going to have a chance to play against some current college players, test their their medal against those players and see where they sit in terms of their own development and their goal to play college tennis. Maybe they're going to have an opportunity to play people my age and, you know, have to deal with slicer dicers that can't move well, but, you know, are crafty out there and that tests their mental capacity on the court. So it's really such a a unique opportunity for juniors to kind of step outside the comfort zone of, you know, whatever normal is in terms of junior tennis these days, but, you know, play some players that they, they haven't come across a million times in their local and sectional play. Right. Right. And, you know, and I think that's regardless of of age, gender, you know, whatever it may be, you know, having the ability to, to find a player and, you know, that's, you know, level-based play is what this is all about, being able to create that in, in these communities all over the country and being able to put yourself in a position where you're seeing players that maybe you don't normally see. Uh, you know, I think that's really important because when you, when you look at really the, you know, the demographics of, say, a college circuit or any of these events, I mean, Lisa, you, you have players, you know, you have a, a 15-year-old, you, you may have a college junior, you may have a you know, 27 year old college tennis alumni playing, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's high level or regardless of your level, moderate level, whatever it may be, it's an opportunity for you to get better and compete against someone that you may never see again. Right. And for kids that want to play in college, you know, let's, let's be real here. I mean, college teams don't play each other based on, you know, age or, or, level or any of that it's you you have to play the person on the other side of the net every single dual match and so to have an opportunity as a junior to start competing against people outside your age group and outside your geographic area without necessarily having to travel the world is really such a a gift to these players right Right. 100 percent and that that kind of leads me to believe, leads me into the high school component in terms yes. of these high school dual matches. You know, one thing I'd like to to mention is you know we're extremely active in the high school market. We have 25 states that are under mandate or recommendation to you to use UTR in terms of dual match reporting, and that's something that has really transcended the game for us is getting these high school dual match results into our system and it's something that we've been dedicated to for years now and we continue to be dedicated to and we want to continue to to grow that that state base and continue to get more and more high school coaches on our platform um, it's something that has been trending upwards we have over 8500 high school coaches that are oh, on wow. our platform at the moment and that's something we want to continue to to bring to the fold and uh, you know these high school matches, count towards UTR and they should count and let's get them into the platform. Well, 
since you brought up high school tennis, um, sure. I love high school tennis and so, uh, it makes me really sad when kids announce that, you know, I'm not playing high school tennis, you know, I, and, and right. the underlying message is I'm too good for it. Um, right. I won't get the right. competition, but what an incredible opportunity to work on parts of your game that mm -hmm. you might not feel comfortable working on in a tournament situation because right. you know you're worried right. about your ranking um but in a high school environment you know it's just it's about team it's about growth it's about giving back um right. and i i feel like there aren't that many opportunities for kids playing an individual sport such as tennis to right. participate in a team environment and what great preparation for being on a college tennis team. Exactly. And, and that's one thing that I'm glad we're talking about, because we, we have roughly around 300 uh, high school coaches that are actively running events on their high school platform off UTR. And what's happened is this has really enabled these players to, you know, play at their own high school courts, have an opportunity to, you know, work on their game outside the high school dual match season. Uh, we're implementing high school camps, um, which is going to be great summer camps at high schools all over the country. But, you know, you, you said it, Lisa, in terms of being a former college coach, I personally, you know, if, if, a, if I had a player who played high school tennis or competed in high school tennis, I see that as a big win because now they know what it's like to be part of a team. They have the opportunity. A lot of international schools don't have that opportunity, but that's something here that we have in the United States, which is overlooked in my opinion. It's an incredible opportunity. You have an mm -hmm. opportunity to be on a team, compete for your school, wear those school colors. And it really puts you in a position if you do want to play college tennis. So I feel that you have an, a built-in advantage there because you know what it's like to be a part of a team. And it's um, not a situation where it's, it's really about the individual. It's always about the team coming first. So um, you know, regardless of level, I, I'm a huge supporter of high school tennis. And, you know, I think that, you know, the more high school tennis players that we can get out there in our communities, the better for the general ecosystem of, of the sport. And we're going to continue to invest in the high school space to, to bring that to the fold because, you know, ultimately, you know, with the platform, you do have the ability to make those matches really count. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's a, there's a program for everyone. There's yep. a college program for everyone. So um, we're really trying to connect the dots there um, from high school to college as well. I love that. If um, one of our listeners, their kids playing for their high school team, but the high school is not reporting results to Universal Tennis at this moment, what's the best way for them to get connected? Yeah, they can reach directly out to us and we can get those results up for them. So it's an opportunity. Ideally, you know, we want the coaches to be putting those results directly into the platform, which they're mm -hmm. able to do for free, no cost. They can literally put the results right in. Um, and if they, you know, if they're having a hard time reaching anyone, high school universal we'll get we'll get it taken care of. So um, just reach out and we can make those results count. Whether your state is under a mandate or not, you know, we can get those results in for you. We'll love that. So for those of you listening, Chase has given out several email addresses. Uh, he has shown us several specific web pages in the Universal Tennis ecosystem that apply to junior players who want to play college tennis and current college players who are looking for competitive opportunities. So please take note of those. I will make sure to include all of those email addresses and links in the show notes on parentingaces.com. So if you didn't have a chance to jot them down, make sure to check them out on our website. And I don't want to hear complaints that you don't know how to reach Universal Tennis because Chase has shared some direct email addresses that will get you to the appropriate person to get your issues handled your questions answered and put you in contact with the appropriate parties at universal tennis so um, please do take advantage of that again i want to reiterate the fact that chase is incredibly responsive he's very active on facebook he's very active on twitter he's got an instagram presence as does universal tennis so you can dm him through those 
different social media outlets. Um, make sure you're following him on those different platforms. And we'll have Chase's handles in the show notes too. So you can just click and follow. Make, we're going to make it easy. We, we want Universal Tennis to continue to grow and thrive and, and serve junior tennis and high school tennis and college tennis here in the States and internationally because it, it's a game changer. It really is. And those of you who are questioning the value of a universal tennis rating, I hope watching and listening to Chase today will reinforce that notion that universal tennis isn't going anywhere. They are here to stay. They are constantly innovating. They're constantly pivoting. And because they are a privately held company, they have the ability to do things quickly and efficiently and to keep costs down, frankly, which is a win for everybody. I'm a bit of a cheerleader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. That, that's like a mic drop there. I, I don't need to add anything <laughs> to that. So I appreciate <laughs> that. No, that's. And I want to I want to just reiterate, I am not a paid endorser of Universal Tennis. I have no financial relationship with them. We are partners, but there's no money involved in that partnership. I simply feel that they are doing what needs to be done to continue to grow tennis in our country and around the world. And um, they're not going anywhere and they're committed to continuing to grow college tennis. So please, please, please continue to support universal tennis events, camps, tournaments. Um, you know, it's, it's a good thing. It's a win for everybody. Absolutely. And, and like, like you said, Lisa, we can get those uh, contacts, that contact information out so that you can share it with yeah. all your listeners. For sure. Absolutely. We'll do. All right. Chase, anything else that we haven't touched on? I think we touched on everything. And I, you know, I look forward to coming back on uh, maybe later in the year with uh, some more announcements that we'll be putting out. So uh, it's an exciting time and going to continue to innovate and elevate the sport as best we can. And, you know, I really appreciate you having me on. Of course, of course. And, you know, just a reminder to everybody, Universal tennis rating is one metric. There are lots of metrics out there. Junior tennis development is a process. The bottom line is commit to getting better every day and all those metrics will take care of themselves. If you want to play college tennis, there is a place for you somewhere and just plug away, keep improving, keep getting better and start marketing yourself to the coaches that you're interested in playing for because there is a, there is a program for you out there. Absolutely. Couldn't yeah. agree more. All right. Chase, great catching up with you. Look forward to seeing you in person at some point soon, I hope. And uh, good luck with all the new initiatives. I know they're going to continue to grow and thrive. And I look forward to following the progress on social media because that's where I get my news. <laughs> and yep. um, and yep. we'll have you back on in a few months and with the updates. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lisa. We'll see you soon. I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. To my listeners, thanks so much for tuning in. We will catch you next time on Parenting Aces.